So here's a point to ponder. Why does our lineage start from Abraham rather than tracing it back to Noah? We talk about ourselves as being the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why not the children of Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? In Jewish literature, we're typically referred to as the offspring of Abraham, even as the rest of civilization is typically referred to as the children of Noah. Well, here's something of an answer. What are you by nature? Are you an optimist who rises to the challenge as it presents itself in life? Or are you a pessimist who maybe gives up at the first hurdle? Let's analyze the character of both Noah and Abraham in the same context. Noah was instructed to build an ark. The building took a total of 120 years. The reason for the lengthy process was because it was hoped that in the interim, Noah would be able to encourage other people to join with him in his voyage, to be able to mend their ways and turn back from their iniquitous past. In the end, however, we know, of course, that it was Noah and his family that were the only sole survivors that entered the ark and subsequently emerged from there. All others perished. Over 120 years, Noah couldn't consider impacting even one other person. Why? I suggest to you, because he was a pessimist by nature. And who could blame him? What he saw before him was a world that was filled with despair. What he spoke was a message of doom and gloom, and you cannot change the world when you don't believe that it can be changed. You can't steer people back onto the right path when your message is a disheartening one. Repent now or forever face your doom. So pessimistic was Noah that we don't even find that he prayed on behalf of humankind, beseeching from the Almighty to spare them. Abraham, on the other hand, he saw a magnificent world where God was manifest throughout. He saw a world that was filled with spiritual opportunity and he saw people and the goodness within. And so his message was an upbeat one, highlighting the unique opportunities as they present themselves. He believed in the potential of every single individual and sought to reach out. Thus, the verse tells us, the souls which they made in Haran. By definition, both Abraham and Sarah were able to impact the different people whom they encountered. There is hope. We can make a difference. Abraham says, come, join me in actually making that difference. Hence later, we find indeed when faced with the prospect of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, very contrary to that of Noah, he prayed for their salvation. He's the eternal optimist. He's determined to find some redeemable quality even within these terribly iniquitous people. He implores God. He engages him in negotiation. He's determined to find some saving grace. You see, ultimately it's a question of personal perception. How we choose to reflect upon the world and the people within is purely subjective dependent on the sort of character and personality that we ourselves are. The optimist is someone who sees the opportunity even in the catastrophe, while the pessimist sees catastrophe even in opportunity. Now, Judaism is always emphatic about taking the upbeat approach. Man's responsibility is to reflect upon the world and his personal role within in a highly charged, vigorous and spirited manner. You know, pessimism is not a sin, but what pessimism itself can lead to, even the worst of sins won't lead to. You're not going to expend any effort or do anything to salvage a situation that you will regard as hopeless in the first instance. The glass is already half empty. I'm not going to bother trying to fill it up again. The optimist, on the other hand, acknowledges the fact that I am created in the image of God and that through my active involvement, I can partner God in the creation process. Is that then not the secret of Jewish survival? You want to know why they're the children of Abraham? Because Abraham's story is our story. Abraham ingrains into the minds and hearts of all of his subsequent descendants to be able to always face whatever the challenge with a continued powerful sense of optimism. A people as small as ours have survived against the odds throughout centuries of exiles and expulsions Precisely because notwithstanding whatever life threw our way, we still prayed and we still studied and we still remained steadfast in our traditions and we still held strong in our identity as Jews 
with a tenacity awesome in strength. No matter the moment, we saw the opportunity and we fought always to live another day. Yes, there are those people for whom when the challenge presents itself, they throw their hands up in despair, they cry at their predicament, they lament their fate, and they simply give up before even considering options. And then there are others who look at the bigger picture and recognize that for as long as there's still blood running through my veins, I am still going to summon the strength and the resolve to fight for another day. So what are you by nature? An optimist or a pessimist? Remember, you inherited optimism from your forefather Abraham. Now it's up to you to determine how you're going to exercise that unique quality and confront your world and your challenge within in a very upbeat manner, making your difference always and forever for all of mankind. Shabbat Shalom.